Mommy is fast. Wayne, can you hear me? Yes. Can you see a timer? Um, just a moment. Um, yes, I can. Okay. Wayne, good. A singular gender, new, gender neutral third person personal pronoun program. A singular gender neutral third person personal pronoun program. Wayne, good. For most of my life, I detested grammar only slightly less than Brussels sprouts. However, these days, I find it fascinating. I mean, grammar, that is, not Brussels sprouts. Ugh. Contest chair. Friends and anyone who thinks that being grammarian is cruel and unusual punishment. Like it or not, we must deal with the problems of grammar, including the singular, gender neutral, third person, personal pronoun problem. Simply stated, the problem is this. What pronoun should you use when you could be referring to a man or a woman? This is not an easy choice. For, ex for example, when a Toastmaster is nervous, blank may fidget. This is not an easy choice. Deciding which pronoun to use is as complicated and potentially disastrous is deciding whether to snip the red wire or the blue wire when diffusing a bomb. For centuries, English used he as the singular, gender neutral, third person, personal pronoun. However, in the 70s, people began to complain that this was sexist, that using he implied the pronoun referred to a man. They wanted the world to know that a woman was just as capable as any man of being the antecedent of a pronoun. But they overlooked the fact that he is also sexist against men. Women have their own personal pronoun, she, but men must share their personal pronoun, he, with a gender neutral case. So if you want to use a pronoun that refers specifically to a woman, you use she. If you want to use a pronoun that refers specifically to a man, too bad, so sad, you can't. The only way to give men and women grammatical equality is to stop using he as the singular, gender neutral, third person, personal pronoun. The problem is, what should we use? The obvious choice might seem to be it. It's gender neutral. Let's try it in a test case. When a Toastmaster is nervous, it may fidget and shuffle its papers. If it sees its way clear, it may attempt to flee before someone forces it to speak. Sounds like a nature documentary. The Toastmaster of the day may be forced to use a tranquilizer dart to prevent its escape. It will not work. Perhaps they, it's also gender neutral, true, but they is plural, not singular. Unless the antecedent of the pronoun happens to have multiple personality disorder, they is grammatically incorrect. The most common suggestion is to use the phrases he or she, him or her, and his or her. That sounds like it's going to be complicated, but Let's take it for a test drive. When a Toastmaster is nervous, he or she may fidget. If he or she sees that his or her way is clear, he or she may attempt to flee before he or she is forced to speak. Well, that just rolls right off the tongue. And it's still sexist. He comes before she. We would need grammar checkers to balance the use of he or she uh, with she or he, 
her or him and her or his. And what about conversation? You need to use a scorecard to balance using he or she and she or him. Life is too short for grammatical gymnastics. Now, some have suggested shortening even further to he slash she, him slash her, and his slash hers. Really? I mean, he slash she, she slash he, isn't there already enough violence in the world? This is not going to work. Now, some have suggested shortening he or she even further to S slash H-E or S in parentheses H-E. How do you even pronounce this? He and it's sexist. Men must share their entire pronoun, but women get the letter S all to themselves. These choices are so messy that you might think the simplest thing would be to invent a word. Would you believe that's been tried? Not once, not twice, not three times, but according to Wikipedia, and if you can't trust Wikipedia, I mean, who can you trust? It's been tried no less than 43 times including such gems as G, G, Pe, Per, Yo, Co, and Thon. Okay, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. However, if at 43rd you don't succeed, just give up. Like so many problems in life, there isn't a good solution. We will need to choose the lesser of, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 43, 48 evils. And that choice clearly is they. Yes, it's grammatically incorrect. But, I mean, seriously, given all the problems with all the alternatives, merely being wrong <laughs> is not that bad. And more important, right here, right now, we can begin to change the world, or at least the English-speaking portion of it, resolve to use they as the singular, gender-neutral, third-person, personal pronoun. When you're a grammarian, enforce it in your club. As Toastmasters begin to use they in their civilian lives, its usage will spread around the world until finally, at long last, men and women will have grammatical equality. Madam Toastmaster. Okay, one minute to pause. Okay. Christine, can you hear me? Can. We have 15 more seconds. 15 more seconds, sorry. Yes, now it's ready. And Christine, can you see a timer? Yes, I can. Yes. Christine Ingram, the levels of pet ownership. The levels of pet ownership. Christine Ingram. Thank you, contest master. Last year, my husband and I made a really big decision we decided to get a cat. Now that might not sound like a big decision to many of you, but for us, it was huge. You see, a few years prior, we had accidentally gotten the hardest pet to own. This pet almost ruined all pet ownership for us. Today, I'm gonna to give you five levels of pet ownership. So that way you, you move up in a nice methodical fashion and don't just jump straight to level five like we did. The first and easiest pet to get is a pet fish. Other than a pet rock, it doesn't get much easier than a pet fish. You basically just have to clean the bowl and do this wrist action once a day, and that's it. The problem with the fish though is there's not a very high payoff. You basically look at the fish, 
He looks back at you and that's it. That's why I would recommend moving straight on to level two of pet ownership. A cat. I have had my cat now for almost a year and I can tell you it is just as magical as everyone says it's going to be. It's basically as easy as owning a fish, but you do have one added responsibility now of a litter box. There are, however, loopholes to the litter box. For example, you can be lazy like we were and get an automatic litter box that scoops itself. You can even take it one step further like I did and get pregnant. Then you're completely taken off litter box duty for nine whole months. I even had the baby now and I'm still getting out of litter box duty. The difference from a fish though is a cat has extremely high payoff. For example, the other day I was just standing there and my cat Dahlia walked up and brushed against my leg. It was awesome. That's how I know she cares about me. She could also possibly be trying to trip me, but we're gonna say that after a year, she probably loves me at this point. Now I get it. Not everyone apparently loves cats as much as I do. I semi accept that fact. If you are one of these people, move on to level three of pet ownership and get a dog. Dogs are great. They're so much fun, they're loving and playful. I love dogs, but they are a lot more responsibility. They, unlike a cat, they both want and need your undivided attention 24 seven. My sister has three amazing large dogs, but anytime she leaves the house, they manage to go through all five stages of grief. Once they finally get to acceptance, acceptance that they alone are gonna have to make it in this dog eat dog world, she comes home with milk or whatever it was she left to get and they have the best day ever. Now, moving on to level four, we're starting to get a little bit more interesting. It's starting to get a little harder, but not quite at that hardest level yet. The level four pet that you can own is a tiger. Now, I might not look like someone who knows about tiger ownership. However, I know what happens in the hit Netflix documentary, Tiger King. Therefore, I am a tiger owning expert. It's essentially just like owning a cat. The main difference is a cat might think they're in charge, but a tiger is legitimately in charge. There are also some lesser known hazards that you pick up from the show. For example, you might lose your arm one day. Just apparently happens. The good thing is you're okay with it because it made the tiger happy. So I guess that's a win. Also, your ego is going to grow to preposterous levels to where your head will barely fit through a normal sized door frame. Then last and most important, you will at some point accidentally join a cult you will only realize that you were in the cult once it is far too late and you were embedded in the culture. Those are just a few things to keep in mind before you get that first tiger cub and hopefully high quality cage. Now, moving on to level five, the hardest pet to own, the pet that almost ruined everything for me. The hardest pet to own is sourdough starter. It is terrible trying to take care of this tiny little creature. We started like most innocent pet owners do. We said, hey, we like bread. We should get sourdough starter. We then found a woman with a 40 year old sourdough starter. Now knowing what I know, I would call her an expert zoologist. She gave us some of her starter along with the most delicious bread I have ever eaten. We took in this starter and started taking care of it. We even gave it a name, Thor. But before we knew it, Thor became the real life Tamagotchi determined to ruin our lives. Did you know with sourdough starter, you constantly have to move it from point A to point B and feed it based on its very strict schedule? 
before you know it, you're expected to bake three loaves of bread every five days. What are two people supposed to do with three loaves of bread every five days? It's insane. What didn't help the matter was that every loaf of bread that we made was terrible. It was dense and, and gooey. Somehow it was also stale, coming straight out of the oven. But I consider myself to be a pretty decent baker. So now Thor had me questioning my baking abilities. No, that was it. After a few weeks of that, we made the very tough yet pretty simple decision to take Thor, son of Odin, and pour him down the kitchen drain. It was tough and Peta might get called on me, but it had to be done. That's why I'm begging you all today. If you're thinking about getting a pet, do yourself a favor. Start with a nice, easy pet. Get yourself a cat or a dog or a tiger. Because I can guarantee you in the past year of owning my cat, I haven't been tempted to pour her down the kitchen drain even once. Thank you. One minute past. Heidi, can you hear me? I can hear you, but I'm looking for the timer. You're looking for the timer? Yeah. Uh, because he keep on jumping from one page to another. Okay, I find him. You found it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Heidi B. All the lies my mother told me. All the lies my mother told me. Heidi B. Raise your hand if you are a parent. Keep your hands up if you ever told your children that they are special and beautiful. You are a liar. I have seen some of your kids and I know that you saw mine too. We are all liars. Madame Contest Chair and fellow liars. I wonder if, wait, if lying is one of the skill set to be a parent. Take my mother as an example. I thought that she has lied to me for over a thousand times for whatever reason they were. For all the lies she told me, there were three significant lies that I will never forget. And I want to share with you today. The first one, I call it the unforgettable lie. For those of you who knew me, know that I'm afraid of animals. I'm scared of dog, kids, uh, uh, children, uh, like, like animal, snakes, picture, uh, chicken, literally anything that is living things that is not a human being. Hmm, maybe some human beings. When I was young, I actually loved small animals, especially lizards. I thought that they're cute and gorgeous until my loving mother told me about the nature of a lizard. She said, when you attack a lizard, somehow the tail will detach from the body and somehow the tail will get to, into my ear. What? A tail will get into my ear? Can you imagine how scared I was? Wait a minute. Was that why Uncle Robert was deaf? Was that why he was wearing his hearing aid? Ugh. I have been wearing my headphone for a whole month. The second one, I call it the organic lie. I'm sure I'm not the only one that hear this common lie. Had your mother ever told you that when you swallow an apple seed, an apple tree will grow from your head? If that is true for all the apple seeds that I swallow, I should be selling organic apple in the farmer's market. She also told me that when you swallow watermelon seed, a watermelon plant will come out from my tummy. At one point, I was staring at my tummy, 
panicking, waiting for the watermelon plant to come out. If I followed the same logic, I would be swallowing pennies, dimes, nickels, quarters. Hopefully, one day, somehow for my body will grow a money tree. The third one, I call it the, are you kidding me lie? I can't believe that my mother actually told me that melted ice cream is poisonous. I wonder if she made it up or it was the lie from her mother. When I was young, I watched news and I heard people commit suicide from jumping from a tall building or jumping in front of a running train. I always wonder how come they don't eat melted ice cream? And as an adult, I realized that melted ice cream is milk. When it comes to suicide, melted ice cream, death by milk. What am I saying? For good or for bad, there's always a reason for a parent to lie to the children. Now that I'm a parent myself, I definitely lie. I had to lie to survive raising children. The best that I want to share with you today was when my kids were still very young, they could not read yet. I took them to the toy store and they will bring me the biggest Lego that they can find. And I will pretend that I was very excited. And I say, oh my God, that is awesome. I love it. Oh, let's see. And I will turn the back and then I, I will pretend that I was very upset. Oh no, he said, display only, not for sale. Hmm. And then another time I have to lie that they were not old enough. My kids ask, how old am I supposed to be mommy, baby? How old are you now? Three. Oh, so sorry. It said for children eight years and older, you are not old enough. Hmm. And then I put it back to the shelf. Don't laugh. It works. It works every time until they can read. Damn education. Do you know that there is a fine print to become a parent? They said you are allowed to lie. It's okay. That's how you survive. We have to do whatever it takes. If it works, we do it. Looks like lying is going to be continuous from generation to generation. From all the lies that my mother told me, to all the lies I told my children. I wonder if my lack of lies will pass on all the way to my grandchildren or even great grandchildren. I do hope so because that was one of my best. Can one be proud of a lie? Hmm. I would be lying if I say it wasn't. Parent. Now that you hear my speech, raise your hand if you are not going to lie again. Oh, I just saw one hand. Liar. Madam Contact Chair. No, the results are already in. Today, there are no time disqualifications. Are you ready to hear the results? The third place winner is Wayne Gu. The second place, Christine Ingram. The first place goes to Heidi Lee. 